This speaker is uh, Neville Johnson. He walked with the Lord for about 45 to 50 years. He passed away in September of 2019. And now his prophecies are, are coming um, to pass. Lots and lots of them. And they're coming quicker and quicker. Um, this is a last day's uh, channel. Um, we're the final generation. Um, and if you would like to learn about the Antichrist, the New World Order, the One World Government, the One World Religion, One World Church, the False Prophet, World Bank, the Cashless Society, the Mark of the Beast, World War Three, the Tribulation, the Rapture, the world, One World Court, the Two Witnesses, the One World Economy, One World Military Force, economic, the ec economic collapse, and the uh, World Council of Churches, and more. That it'll get you prepared for what's going to be happening here in the next decade. And um, so subscribe to the channel and um, and keep learning and uh, just uh, get your trust and your belief and your faith in God up. And keep uh, keep reading the Bible, keep praying, keep talking to God and keep pressing into the Lord. But Neville Johnson, the, the speaker, uh, he he was translated all over the place by the Lord. Um, he he would see angels all the time. He'd sit, he'd sit and wait in the Lord, on the Lord every morning. The, morning. the Lord would come in, sit down with him physically and just talk to him and counsel him. He'd, become, he'd get counseled by the cloud of witnesses, Paul, Moses, Enoch. An angel came to him one day with a, with a huge scroll. Cause they, they, that's what they used as uh, records back uh, thousands of years ago, scrolls, like we use books today. And um, the angel told him that he could either eat that scroll or he could put it uh, inside of Neville's chest. And Neville ch chose that uh, not to eat it. He chose that the angel <laughs> stick it in it, put it in his chest. So he actually has the scroll of Enoch in embedded inside of his body. So that's pretty cool to have all that knowledge and wisdom and understanding of Enoch um, teaching inside the body. And he's been translated to Queen Elizabeth's castle to give her a message. You know, they were both shocked and stunned. He didn't know. He gave her the message, and she did it, actually. He, was, he, he went down in the pits, pits of hell with an angel, picked him up one morning, and took him down to retrieve King Solomon's crown of wisdom. And he brought it back up to the Lord. The Lord said he's going to distribute it here in the, um, in the final, final days, these last days before his millennial reign. So enjoy, keep learning, subscribe to the channel, and give a thumbs up by all means. It's a, it's called Thumbs Up Ministry, and it helps spread the word around the world when you give a thumbs up on a, a channel. Week. Uh, today we're going to look at some the foundations of love and how it connects with faith. So faith and love, and um, <clears throat> trying to understand this, how they two work together, you know. We humans have a profound ability to make simple things very complicated. And so we want to try and get around some of that complication today. And, uh, you know, there are two, very, two important kingdom laws and uh, which are intrinsic, if you like, to the kingdom of God and operating in the kingdom of God. It is the law of faith. And there is another law of love. So two, two laws are connected to the kingdom, faith and love. And the whole of the kingdom operates on these two things. And we need to understand that. You know, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 27, it says, Where is the boasting then? Is it excluded? By what law? Of works? No but by the law of faith. Now, it's a law of faith. Then we have in James chapter 2 and verse 8, it says, if you fulfill the royal law, there's a kingdom law. So what kind of law is this? The royal law. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you will love your neighbor as yourself. You will do well. So, we have two laws here. Yeah, and it's important to, to understand this. There is the law of faith. It's a law. And there is the law, a royal law of love, which connects to faith. These are kingdom laws, you know, um, basic. Now, a law infers something that is absolute 
as something that is true. For instance, the law of gravity, it never changes. You step off a cliff, you're going to go down. You're not going to go up, you always will go down. All right? That's a law. It's set. It happens every time. It's basic. So we need to understand this. There are two laws in the kingdom which so much hangs upon. and They're not complicated, but they are foundational. And so we need to understand this. The Bible says faith comes. In other words, it is something that comes to us and something that is, if you like, imparted to us. Romans 10, 17, then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So there we have that thing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God, Jesus is the word. So faith comes through a connection with the Lord, a firm, clear connection, hearing, hearing. It is a connection with the Lord, a rima connection, the living word. So, however, faith requires action. In other words, you can't just have faith. Faith and obedience go together. And so we need to understand that. In John chapter 14 and verse 23, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, If a, love, love, if a man love me, he will keep my commandments, keep my words, and my Father then will love him, and we, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That is quite a powerful scripture. He said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And if we do that, the Father will love us, and, we, and he will come unto us and dwell with us. So, not complicated. That's John 5, 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So we have these two laws, two commandments, if you like, two laws. Faith and love <coughs> are inseparable. One works with the other. They work together. So love is the springboard to faith, if you like. You see... That's why the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 3, 17, he said this, that Christ may dwell in your heart by love, by faith, being rooted and grounded in love. Okay. Faith has to be rooted and grounded in love. It's really important we grasp this and put the two together. See, it is God who imparts faith. Then he waits for us to act on it. Only then is power released to bring it to pass. Faith requires action. See, we must turn our focus to him in whatever we do, in all that we need. So faith, we're talking about, springs out of a union that is activated by love and obedience. In Hebrews 13, in verse 8, it says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As Jesus was when he walked the earth for those three and a half years of ministry, when he walked the earth, he is the same today. He's still walking the earth in us, in you, and in me. You know, in, in Luke 17, 21, he said, don't say this, neither say this, lo, here, lo, there is the kingdom, because the kingdom of God is within you. That word within, it's entos, within you and all around you. So, two basic kingdom laws, faith and love, and the whole of God's kingdom operates on these two laws. So we need to understand them. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 27 it says where is the boasting then is it excluded by what law the law of works no but the law of faith so here we gain again we're talking about faith which is a law all right james 2 8 if you fulfill another law called 
the royal law, according to the scriptures, you will love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. Two laws which work together. Faith requires action and obedience. You see in John 14, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and will make my dwelling place with him. Wow. In 1 John 5, 2, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. What were those commandments? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, your neighbor as yourself. Not complicated. We're not talking about a whole heap of laws. We're talking about two very foundational kingdom laws. Faith and love are inseparable. See? Ephesians 3, 17, that Christ might dwell in your hearts by love, that you be rooted and grounded. Faith is rooted and grounded in love. And so it's important to understand this and uh, walk in it, learning to understand it and then to walk in it. When we operate in the realm of faith, we know God releases power. The Bible is very clear on that. But faith springs out of union with the person, God, the Lord. It springs out of union and is activated by love and obedience. Like we said in Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still walking the earth. He hasn't changed, but he's walking the earth in us. Christ in you. There's only hope for this world, this present time. Luke 17, 21, Neither shall you say, Lo here and lo there, for the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, so those two con kingdom laws work within us. Faith that works by love. Okay. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6 it says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but here it is again, but faith which works by love. See, he's hammering this home in Ephesians 3.17, and Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith only when you're rooted and grounded in love. Faith is rooted as a source. It's grounded in love. So Hebrews 13.8, and Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever in you. So, in our approach to God, God has one thing, believe me. Now, in Hebrews, there's a remarkable scripture. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, Without faith, you can't, it's impossible to please God. Do you, do you ever think about this? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You, you need to meditate on that. You need to let that soak in. Impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he's there, he's present, that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must believe him. Two words are used here, faith and belief. Faith is something we have. It's mentioned 223 times in the Bible. Quite a lot of times. Believing is something we do. That's mentioned over 104 times in the Bible. You know, faith, something we have. The word faith comes from the Greek word um, epistis. It means something which we have. Believing is a different word to faith. Um, to believe, it comes from a Greek word, pistio, which means it's a verb, and it means something we do. Something we have, and something we do. You can have faith, but if you don't act on it, nothing happens. They both go together. Both come from the same root word, but they have slightly different meanings. One is a noun, it's something you have. The other is a verb. It's something you do with what you have. Okay. 
God says you have to believe to receive from him. You have to believe to see his promises fulfilled. That's something you do. It's not just something you have, it's something you do. And it works on both sides. God says he has provided all of these things for you. They are yours. But to receive them, you have to have faith and you have to believe. Do something about it. You see, it's believing is not a passive thing. It's not something I believe and so I believe and you wait and you wait and you wait. I believe. Waiting passively. No, it, it, it is something which re requires action, something you do. You see, in John 11, verse 40, Jesus said unto her, Say, said I not unto you that if you would believe, you should see, the, you will see the glory of God. Now, in this story here of that scripture, there's a lot of important truths. You know, one, Lazarus is sick, so they send for Jesus, right? When Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he said to them, this sickness is not unto death. Okay, you can read it all in John chapter 11. This sickness is not unto death. Verse 4. That was God's word on the matter. That's all that was needed. All right? Then this is important. So, Jesus stayed on a, a, a few more days. He didn't come straight away. He just stayed on a few more days. Now, Lazarus dies. When they finally get there, Lazarus has been dead for a number of days. Okay. However, and Mary, see Mary was really angry. She said, you know, in John eleven twenty one, 21, says, then said, said Martha, so Martha unto Jesus, not Mary, Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Ooh, okay. See, Jesus is now surrounded by unbelief. The word of God on this situation was, this sickness is not unto death. That's all they needed to know, okay? But when Jesus finally arrived, you know, there was unbelief everywhere. Now, all they had to do was to believe what Jesus had said to them. This is not unto death. So, Jesus tries to raise their faith again. So, in John eleven twenty three, 23, he says, Jesus said unto her, your brother will rise again. That's a clear statement. But, Martha comes back in John chapter eleven twenty four. 24. She said, uh, uh, I know he shall rise again in the last days in the resurrection. So he, she's putting it off now. But Jesus said, this is not unto death. Unbelief, you see. Jesus said, look, if you would believe to see, you would believe you will see the glory of God. And that's, he said, Mary, that's all you have to do is believe. I've given you a word. He said, just believe it. If that's dead, he's not going to see dead. He's not, he won't. So, that's all you have to do. But her theology negated her faith, you see. And, uh, you know, religious people always have mysterious reasons why it won't work. You, you look at them, you know. They always have a reason why it's not going to work. Well, that's not, it's not for today. That's for the, another time period. Jesus is not like that today. But he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whole denominations have been found in like it's just for today. Those days are past. You know? So Jesus said to Lazarus, come forth. You know? He was the only one who was believing. Jesus made a simple, uncomplicated statement. It's not under death. Just believe it. So Jesus made this remarkable statement. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus said unto them, If you can believe, all things are possible. Now that's quite a statement. All things are possible if you believe. 
King David said this in Psalm 23, verse 13, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. See, we just cruise through life. But life is a process of believing God in all our circumstances and situations. To believe, first we have to have faith. And faith comes by hearing, the Rima, the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the word of God or revelation. You know, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 2, he, he said this, This only would I learn of you. Rece did you receive the spirit of the word, of, 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 spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? See how he uses that phrase? The hearing of faith. And again in Galatians 3, 5. He therefore that ministers to the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by, listen, the hearing of faith? Faith cometh by hearing. The hearing of faith. Faith comes by hearing God's specific word in our lives. Faith comes from the presence of the Lord can come through his word to us. It can come through a word directly to our heart. It can come in many ways. But faith comes by hearing something. And then believing acts on it. The two have to be worked together. See Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You know? In other words, these signs shall follow them that do this. Do what? In my name they will cast out devils and speak with new tongues. See, faith is not passive. Two things are all operating here. To believe, yet yeah, faith is one thing. But to believe means that it's doing. You have to do something. You have to work, move on your faith. They shall cast out devils. They shall take up serpents. If they, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See, that's the word of God. That's the rima, the word of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming what they believed. Confirming what they did. They worked, worked moved to these people and they prayed for them. He confirmed it. To understand faith, now, we must understand the reason for prayer. The question is, and always is, is God really in control of everything? Remember, you are quick to say yes, but think about it. Psalm 2 says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? It's like that in the world today. The world is raging. Psalm 2, verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and rulers take counsel together against God. Look at all the ungodly laws that have been passed in the world today. Totally contrary to scripture. And against his anointed saying, let's break their bands, those laws, and cast away their cords. We won't have these laws of righteousness. We'll go our own way. We are controlling this world. Verse 4, but he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. God is in control. So, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together to good to them that love God and are called unto his purposes. Most Christians don't believe that. Yet by up here they believe it, but in reality they don't. Colossians 1, 16, and by him, that's the Lord, were all things created that are in heaven and the earth, visible and invisible things that were created, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, now listen to this little phrase, he is before all things and by him everything in this world we see every reality and by him all things continue to exist all things consist is, is the word used but 
if they continue to exist. This is fundamental. See, nothing happens without God's permission. Now, he said, well, what about evil? God permits evil through the laws that he has set. For instance, the law of sowing and reaping. He said, if you do this, that's what you're going to reap. It's either good or bad. It can be bad. A lot of stuff in the world that's happening today is what we have sown, the laws we have put in place, and so on. The wages of sin is death. We have a free will. So, we know that God is in control and he's working to a plan. And he can do anything. You know? Then we should ask the question, well, if, if that is the case, why should we pray? Why don't we leave it all to God? He's in control. He's going to handle it. Well, it's time for some shock treatment. Are you ready? Prayer does not persuade God to do something. Now, that would go all over the internet. Neville Johnson doesn't believe in prayer. I haven't finished. God does not need you to pray. He's doing quite well on his own. However, God has chosen, now listen to me, to delegate the running of his kingdom and bring to pass his purpose in the earth through his church. It's important to understand that. In Ephesians 3.10, to the intent now that principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. See, God does everything through the word that he speaks. His words he speaks, he created this word. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, Psalm 33, 6. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word of the Lord, by the breath of his mouth. Word and spirit. Genesis 1, 3, God said, let there be light. There was light. Genesis 1, 6, and he said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters. Let the waters, let it divide the waters from the waters. All happened. Now, the key to prayer. Let's talk about this. In Psalm 115, 16, the heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth is given to the children of man. That's the key verse. The earth he's given to man. The earth and everything in it was given to Adam. Adam have dominion, he said, over this earth. Because of this, God will not intervene in the affairs of men unless we ask him to do it. He's given it to us. Unless we ask him to do it. However, we need to know his will before we ask him to do it. When God chooses to do something, now listen to me, when God is choosing to do something, that is passed on to his people who in turn speak it into existence. We call that prayer, one aspect of prayer. And so we are learning to administer his affairs through the medium of prayer. This is the very essence of true prayer. All prayer has its foundation in this. Prayers that are answered are prayers that originated what God wants to do, but he will not do it until we ask him to do it, because he's given the earth to us. 1 John 4, 15, and this is the confidence we have, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So we need to know his will, but it will not, be ha it will not happen unless we ask him to do it. Therefore, we have to know his will. On John 5, 14, this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we ask anything in my name, according to his, he will do it. He is behind it. If you abide in my words and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. See, faith in prayer is simply knowing that you're doing his will. And if you don't know, just pray in tongues. For the Bible says we don't know what to pray, how to pray. And they say, well, just pray in tongues. Faith works by love. A major aspect of love involves sacrifice. 
Okay, now listen to me. True prayer, prayer is motivated by love and it often means sacrifice on our behalf. Love and sacrifice go together. You know, there's a particular sacrifice that God requires of us. We talked about it a few weeks back in Isaiah 56 verse 6. Is not this the fast or the sacrifice that I have chosen for you to loose the bands of wickedness? You say, well, how can that be a sacrifice? Well, it is. And it can be. To undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free. How did that work? Well, when you deal your bread to the hungry, give some of your stuff away. That's a sacrifice. And when you bring the poor that are cast out of your house, when you see if the naked that you cover him, then something will start. Your light shall begin to break forth. This is the sacrifice that God has chosen. See? Faith often requires, it means, and love, sacrifice. Then shall your light be forth. You call and I will answer then. But it doesn't come without sacrifice. And I shall call. If you take away the midst of you, the putting forth of your finger, if you draw it your soul to the hungry, what do you want to have faith for? You see, they go together. And the Lord will guide you continually. You build the old ways. When we are willing to sacrifice for others, God will release faith for us to accomplish in it, that. And he will then bless us abundantly. Let me say that again. When we were willing to sacrifice for others, God will release faith in order for you to be able to do it. This is the royal law according to scriptures. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. That's a sacrifice. Galatians 4, verse 5, 6. For Jesus Christ there is neither circumcision availeth in anything but uncircumcision. The only thing that works is faith, which works by love, sacrifice. Then Christ will dwell in your heart by faith, because you're rooted and grounded in love. And so here we are, you know, foundation two laws, love and faith, and they have to work together. Love, faith is activated by love, doing. One is having faith, one is doing faith. Important kingdom laws that work together and they are foundations in our lives. Gonna cause sacrifice, you see, for faith to spring into action. These are royal laws. If you fulfill the royal laws, which is thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. You do well, it's a royal law. And faith, which is activated, the Bible says, by love, and love is a sacrifice. It's not complicated, it's not difficult, but it is costly. But in the end, then your light shall arise, and God's protection over your lives will be in place because you're moving in these two basic laws which God requires of us. God bless you. Keep learning, folks. We are the remnant. We are the final generation, chosen the elect. Listen to something every day. Get up to speed. Have a great day in Jesus' name.